My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how-tos, and reviews. And in today's video, we'll be doing a review on this PJ trailer. This is a 7x14, 14,000 pound trailer. This is a gooseneck trailer. We do have the Fort Box Knox um, pin bolt modification on there. We've also got this Fastway, I think it's the zip system uh, upgrade. And other than that, this is what it came with. We've also got our wiring, which plugs in right here. One really nice feature up front here is these hooks they've got, which really make it easy to take your safety chains, hook them up, and uh, when you're storing it. Up front here, we also have a spare tire mount. Okay, up front here, we've got a toolbox. It's one area a little bit deficient in. This handle is broken. here we've, we've lost connectivity in this mechanism so that's a poor design unfortunate um, but everything else still functions um, one really nice feature is this outlet for charging as many people that uh, tow dump trailers know uh, usually hooked up to the truck uh, it's not enough to charge it so we've got this charger and it also comes with this really nice um, battery charge indicator um, so it'll tell you how full it's charged. And right now we're at uh, fair charge. Um, and then while it's charging, you can see that it powers on charging or if it's charged. Interstate battery and our hydraulic pump. And then we've got our control. And this has a really long tail on it, which makes it really nice dumping you can uh, get out and see what you're doing and uh, move around if you have to give you a look under here we've got a scissor lift and here's one area where a lot of people probably aren't looking at their trailers but it's another important area to look is we've got these welds that are actually wearing right here see these welds on the end cap here uh, a little bit bubbled out and uh, just causing some issues uh, when they sit on the frame here. So they sit on the frame here, and this is where it rubs. So uh, I, I foresee this causing future issues. Obviously we have a potential for rust here, uh, but my bigger concern is that these will actually wear through and cause a structural strength uh, or distress to the frame here. So this is an I-beam frame, and uh, if we wear out that top I-beam, that's gonna cause issues. We've got the same issue on the other side. So not, not as severe, not as bad, but we've got a deep pivot there and you can see here again where we're making contact we've got these these just big spots you know the solution for that probably would have been to to uh, grind those off on the outside or to weld them on the inside and not the outside um, but that's a little bit concerning to me that that all that, all that weight's being set right there um, the alternative too is we've got the c-channel and that c-channel is supposed to sit inside the frame here um, the weight of the trailer could be setting on that instead of on this piece obviously this is where they're intending it to be so um, just needs to be a choice there it, just something that needs to be paid attention to we've got twin 12,000 pound uh, jacks up front here um, the jacks work really well they have really nice extendable legs on them you pull this big pin drop them down and you can jack it up and then you just pull the pin um, those have functioned really well one pretty big disappointment with this trailer is this system right here so we've got our tarp system which works really well we've got the tarp that goes back and hooks on the back tailgate and and you can wind it up that works really well the problem is we've got this handle right here and this handle right here and when you're using them they come into contact with one another so bad design there another disappointing thing is they uh, misalign these holes and so this um, this is wearing out and causing it to touch, so that's an issue too. So um, just manufacturing flaws, uh, things that are on a mash production level uh, should have been noticed and should have been remedied uh, long before uh, this particular trailer was made. Um, this has a handle on it as well to uh, retract the, the tarp. Um, but you know both these systems work great by themselves just the fact that they're right here next to each other and come into contact I feel like there's a better a better setup possibility here 
This handle works really well. We've got a little place to hold that. One big complaint a lot of people have on these PJ trailers is their powder coat finish. And I would agree, it's a little bit lackluster. You can see here we've got um, some powder coat peeling. And in, you know this trailer in particular is not super bad yet, but there's certainly some areas where we're having the powder coat peel off and have chipping issues. Um, and anywhere there is a finger a dent is, is where that really tends to peel off and, and fail. I'm not sure exactly how many miles this trailer has on it. I would guess somewhere between 2,000 and 5,000 miles. Um, and it's been used pretty well. Uh, pretty, pretty good life cycle, pretty good use, uh, at least for testing purposes. Uh, it's about a year and a half old, uh, maybe two years now. And uh, again, two to 5,000 miles. I don't tow with this trailer as often as I do my enclosed trailer, um, but it does get a fair amount of use hauling equipment as well as hauling uh, dirt, mulch, rock, all sorts of different stuff. So, uh, back to tailgate here, really nice system. We've got, um, you've got your uh, dump option where you pull that lever and it can pull back. You can also chain it here. And uh, if you want to like gravel driveway, you can control it. I've never chained it. Um, so I'm not sure how well that works. It also has the, the, the barn door style opening, which is usually how I use it. Um, but it is nice to use that dump feature when uh, you're in tight spaces and don't want the, the doors swung open. Um, these doors have a, a little ramp that this pin rides up and latches in. That works really well on this side. On this side, not so well. This side's a little bit uh, further angled down, which causes it to bind up, and sometimes you have to lift that pin to get it in. So the easy fix for that would be to bend this up a little bit more and just have it be a more gradual transition than it is currently. Currently that's a pretty steep angle. Sometimes it'll work fine, and sometimes that'll catch. So unfortunately, recently we had the chance to test the max strength on these ramps and this back tailgate system, and it's uh, it's not the best. I had an unfortunate um, loading experience, um, got greedy, tried to load on too, too, too steep of a hill, and the truck and trailer started running away on me, so I had to back off pretty quickly, and that caused some extra uh, wear and tear on components. I would say the, the components, the re loading ramps, the back tailgate, all are sufficient for normal use, um, but they are not as overly or heavy duty built as what I was hoping they would have been, or, or expecting them to be, um, but they are uh, suitable for for most everyday use. You can see right here where the, we've got some stress cracks in the powder coat. What happened is when I came off the trailer this pin pulled on this side. So this side the damage was here. These bars are straight but on the other side the damage happened right here. So that pressure pulled right here and the ramps both bent as well. So we'll see these, these ramps have been pretty beefy. This is a pretty heavy skid steer. This is the Bobcat T650 and um, under normal conditions, normal loading and offloading, I mean, we've loaded this so many times and, and no issues. I mean, they've been really good rate ramps until we had this uh, quick offload situation. Uh, the length is perfect on them. Love the length. They work really well. So here you can see one of these ramps. We've got stuff under there. So it's all it's all flat back there. And then this last little bit, you can see how much it bent. It mostly bent on the left side, but it did bend some on the right side. Um, so that's the worst ramp. That one bent right here so again that powder coat does peel off anywhere it's moved here we've got some powder coat peeling um, and the online reviews all say that they just don't do enough prep work so that that's the reason the powder coat doesn't stick better so the way this uh, swing gate opens is we've got a gap here and that swing gate opens right here and that damage on that pin over there allows this movement now. Um, I, I thought that we got away unscathed. I thought the only damage was right here and that would just need to be uh, hammered back in, heated up and hammered back in. And then I noticed that there was this larger gap here. And then I started moving it and saw how much of a gap we had here. And that's when I, I knew and realized that this, this piece had been um, injured in the process, unfortunately. And here you can see this pin and you can see how tight our tolerances are right here. Um, so this one's holding a lot better than the other side. Uh, these ramp doors work pretty well. This one doesn't have one in it right now. Um, but stuff does get caught in here as well. And you can slide a ramp in there. This, this um, ramp on the right couldn't fit in here because it's bent more than the one on the left. The one on the left barely fit in there. Uh, but these slide back there and that's a pretty good uh, storage place for your, your ramps don't get lost. Uh, these tie downs are pretty heavy duty. They've taken some abuse. You can see that they've bent inward as we loaded up the skid steer and uh, attached to there. Um, one thing that I have noticed is they could have done a little bit better job with is the welds here. So here you can see 
these welds are holding really well and pulling um, but it is pulling this sheet metal away from the frame here and the easy fix for that would have been wouldn't want to weld on this side because we've got this door there but you can see here we've got this nice bracket right here we got a wonderful bracket with weld to they could have easily done a bead right there which is exactly where that tie down is we've also got this spot right here they could have done a bead and back here as well so we've got um, We've got a bead down here and a bead way up here and nothing in the middle. And if they would have simply done a bead in the middle there, that would have made this corner much stronger, much, much stronger. Same thing on this side. We've got that gap forming um, where they could have otherwise fixed that. And here's actually a good look, a good peek inside. You can see that rust back behind there where there's no powder coat, nothing in there. And it's just open to the elements and it's caused it to rust out. So these front tie downs have uh, fared a lot better and uh, they're mounted a little bit lower and closer to this weld. So you can see there is some slight cracking in here, but not near as bad as on the rear. Lighting all works really well. Um, have had a couple of these pop out, um, but other than that, they've popped right back in. No problems, LED lights all work great. Um, no issues there. Uh, the inside's powder coated as well. Um, so when you first get these, they're kind of sticky. You put dirt and soil in them, they stick. Once you get some use in here, run some gravel through it and kind of scrape it off. Uh, it's a lot easier for things to slide on here and it starts functioning a lot better So you kind of have to break in these trailers uh, for use like that Here's another spot where we've got um, I don't know if that's a chip or a wear off mark. So these have a upgraded 14 ply rated tire These are an ST 235-85 R16 Tires have held up pretty good. We've got a tandem axle set up here with the pivot block in the center we are on leaf springs and you know what this trailer actually works really well um, the reason I got a little bit greedy in the situation is because when you load on this trailer it doesn't take a lot of weight off the front sometimes on these trailers when you're loading equipment all that extra leverage on the back pushes up the the truck and lifts the tires off the ground uh, I didn't realize it lifted the tires off as much as they did I don't even think they they lost contact with the ground but uh, they definitely lost pressure enough to the place where the, the parking brake and the parking pawl uh, couldn't hold the truck in place and started sliding forward with the weight of the trailer and the weight of the truck and, and the steepness of the hill. It is pretty good on most situations to load. It doesn't lift a ton of weight off the rear of the truck, which is, which is a good thing. So overall, this trailer's worked out very well for the business. I've always said that a perfect uh, beginner landscaping trailer would be a dump trailer. You can use it to call it haul materials and equipment and this hat's what we've got right here uh, really good beginner setup pj trailers i'm not going to say it's the most high end but you're also not paying the most premium price for it um, it's been a good trailer uh, you can see the flaws that it has some things that uh, in manufacturing processes that could be changed uh, just, just little tweaks and improvements that could really change the overall feel of the, the trailer and the, the future functionality. I think there's some things that uh, could definitely be improved upon, uh, but for the most part, it's a really well built trailer, pretty durable, and uh, it's held up to some excessive use and abuse uh, beyond probably what I would expect out of it, um, like we showed in our offloading situation, as well as just it's getting used. You know, it's getting used to haul, haul heavy loads, hauling equipment around, and uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this uh, review on this PJ dump trailer. Uh, if you would, give us a big thumbs up and a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel and leave any questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching Thrifty Garage.